like floating castles, Antarctica's first icebergs. It's a sight that takes your breath away. We're on our way to the world's fifth largest continent. It is the hardest to reach, the least understood, and also the most fragile. We're aboard the Astrolab, which left Australia's shores five days ago to deliver supplies to the French polar base. This team of 15 researchers is going there to study the impact of global warming. Amongst them, Stéphane Ordez, a marine biologist who still cannot believe that he was invited to this open-air laboratory. There's a seal right there. This is simply amazing. Stefan, how does it make you feel to see this? How could I explain? It makes you feel lucky to be here because it's an honor to be here. Three years ago, I wrote a project to come and work here in Antarctica, and it was accepted. Now I'm living the dream. As we near Adélie land, the crew raises the flag of the French Southern and Antarctic territories. Here, at the end of the end of the world, lies a part of France. This is the most challenging part of the journey for Captain Stanislas de Borzine. He has to steer his 80-meter-long boat through the ice pack. In the lookout post, his assistant helps him make his way. Towards the west, I can still see some water. I think that if we head further in that direction, we'll be in open waters. He's looking out for giant icebergs that are drifting because of the melting sea ice. The maneuver is risky, as floes weighing several tons have to be pushed or broken to move forward. It's important to keep moving. The first challenge is not to damage the boat, because it could break in such conditions. And then you just need to find your way. In general, we try to chart a course over 100 or 200 meters, as far as my eyes can see. And instead of avoiding the big ice flows, sometimes we just break them once and for all. It saves us time. But 40 kilometers from the base, the ship gets stuck. The ice sheet is too compact. A helicopter will take the crew the rest of the way. Stéphane Ordez, the biologist, is amongst the first passengers to take off. The vast landscape of Antarctica unfolds before his eyes. This continent of ice, twice the size of Australia, is blanketed by a 1,500-meter-thick ice sheet. A no-man's land with only a couple of scientific bases, like Dumont d'Urville, named after the French explorer who docked here back in 1840, amongst this colony of penguins. In winter, temperatures can drop to minus 80 degrees. But during the austral summer, like now, night never falls. The sun barely brushes the horizon and temperatures increasingly rise above zero. Meteorologists, glaciologists, climate scientists. This is where these experts come to check the pulse of our planet. Christophe Quinton has developed instruments to quantify snow and blizzards. There's a high mast. It's a unique structure in Antarctica. We have placed instruments along its 70 meters high body to measure the snow particles and estimate the rainfall. Until now, we never knew how much rain was falling over Antarctica. 
Global warming could be four times faster in Antarctica than elsewhere in the world. We have a large water reserve here. If the smallest fraction melts, seas would rise worldwide. So although Antarctica is far from everything and it's empty, it does not mean that it cannot have a global impact. The worst case scenario, where all this ice would melt, could lead to a 60 meter rise in sea levels. We meet up with biologist Stefan Ordez on his first day on the ice flows as he collects samples with his colleagues. To get there, we will have to walk on the ice. The flow is not very safe, so we have instructions. Avoid walking where it is a little gleaming, like here. In doubt, we should test the ice well with our walking stick. They're here to study krill, a microscopic shrimp and the staple food of all marine mammals. If this crustacean were to disappear, it would threaten the ecology of the whole region. We are trying to find out if they have the potential to survive a rise in temperatures. They play an important role in the ecosystem. And if they were to disappear, it would have a very negative impact. Could it threaten the food chain and affect whales, uh, penguins, fish? Yes, definitely. So here we have placed our trap with fermented fish bait inside. It is 20 meters deep. Stefan Ordez will stay for 45 days in Antarctica, but he will need many months back in France in order to analyze all the data. On the rest of the continent, the results of the primary studies conducted so far leave little to doubt. Climate change is causing food stocks in the sea to decrease. And these penguins are the first victims. These birds can swim in waters below zero degrees, and they mainly feed on microorganisms that thrive under the sea ice. If the ice melts, they will be doomed. Over the past 65 years, French teams of ornithologists have been taking turns to study the fauna of Adélie land. This morning, we're following the ornithologist Céline Leboec on her observation round. They've moved again. She's been studying penguins for 15 years. Because yesterday the colony was standing further into that corner. Close to the base, two species coexist. The emperor penguins are bigger in size and more famous, having starred in the Oscar-winning documentary March of the Penguins. The Adelie penguins are more numerous, but both species are threatened by climate change. Are they scared of us? They are bothered. I wouldn't say that they are afraid, but they feel something different in their environment. Ornithologists are trying to track penguin populations with the help of special cables. Each time a penguin walks over them, it's counted. All the data is recorded here. Global warming has strongly impacted both the ice and the food chain, and now Adelie penguins in Antarctica suffer. I would say we have had an 80 to 90 percent decrease of these populations in the Antarctic Peninsula. And the decline could be brutally rapid. In a colony close to the base, a gate registers every entry and exit. The penguins are weighed to know their weight before and after they go fishing. Couples are numbered and their eggs and chicks are regularly examined. So now we are going to catch the chick of a couple we have been following since the season started. He's not very happy. The chicks are the most sensitive to changes in the temperature. 
54 millimetres. She measured the bird's beak and now she will measure its wings. For the past two years, a new phenomenon has been observed in Antarctica, regular rainfall. The chick's first feathers only protect them against the cold and not from water or melted snow. When temperatures drop again at night, the wet chicks freeze and die in huge numbers. The breeding success on this archipelago of these colonies changes across time. The number of chicks produced over a year changes. And for example, last year, the breeding success was zero. All chicks died. Not a single one survived. The chick is going to call out now, and its parents are going to come back slowly. It is probably only a matter of time before penguins are extinct on Adelie land. But France isn't investing in Antarctica only to save these birds. Beyond the noble scientific intentions, the French also want to stake a claim to this piece of Earth. 30 people live all year round at the base, which has a hospital, a post office and a district manager, an administrator with a colonial era title. François Grosvalet is the French envoy to this immense frigid desert. To the French authorities, his presence is needed as these lands and their natural resources are coveted by world powers. So there could potentially be oil, gas and minerals. There's potentially all of this. We're on a very large continent, bigger than Australia and about 20 times the size of France. We already know that there are oil resources around Antarctica and that there probably are ores, gemstones and maybe a lot of other things we cannot access yet because of the 1500 meters blanket of ice covering them. If the Indians are here, the Chinese are here, does it mean that plans are being made for the future? Yes, slowly the future is taking shape, and I think the race for the conquest of Antarctica, which will begin in 100 or 200 years, has already started. At the moment, the Antarctic Treaty bans drilling, but it is due to expire in 2049. Another threat to the White Continent. This year, on another base in the Antarctic Peninsula, Argentinian scientists measured record high temperatures, 17 degrees Celsius, two days in a row, an ominous warning to mankind.